What's the most important thing about a fast movie? Family. <coughs> Excuse me. Absurdity. Hello. What up, party people? Bobo here with Brass Real Brothers. Thanks for coming back for some more popcorn. Well, I went and saw F9 last night in IMAX. There's any of you out there that are just wondering, ooh, what's it gonna be like? It's a Fast and Furious movie. And if you've kept up with the Fast and Furious movies, you've known that they've sort of switched tones and gears throughout the films, like 100%, done a full 180. Everybody's back in this one, Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, who looks the best she's ever looked, by the way, in this. Same with Jordana Brewster. Man, what are those girls, like, backwards aging or something? But Luda and Tyrese show up again, as they've sort of become main characters of the franchise now. And the only director who's directed more than one film came back for this one, Justin Lin. In fact, this is his fifth one, and I'm pretty sure that he's gonna do the next ones. Honestly, the only real missing link is Paul Walker. And yeah, they can make more movies without him, but it's kind of like when they started making Seasons of the Office without Steve Carell. There was something to watch there and they were still enjoyable, but it was definitely not as good. And I had a huge soft spot for Paul Walker. I loved that guy. I just thought something about him I loved. R.I.P. Paul. So look, at this point, if you're expecting to go into a Fast and the Furious movie and expect some sort of like realistic approach to car driving and action, you're a fool. They're very clear about what kind of movies these are now. They are the epitome and definition of pushing the envelope on screen. I don't think that anybody going to see a Fast and the Furious movie in the theater these days is going to see anything else but absurdity. And that's what we got. But I knew that going in, so I wasn't disappointed. I mean, this one, they definitely go over the top with the stunts like they've never done in the movies before. And I don't mean like, man, look at that awesome stunt. I mean like, what the hell did they just do? I mean, to go from Vin Diesel being just this street racer guy in the first film to now he's just like an invincible superhero, it's just absurd. But that's what the movies have gone, that's what they've turned into, and that's how they market them. So like I said, if you go into these movies thinking that you're gonna get something real, that's your fault. Also, at this point in the franchise, it's kind of become sort of like the American Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter, they had all these who's who British actors always showing up in the franchise. That's sort of what's happening in the Fast and Furious franchise. All these new actors are just showing up. In fact, this one has all the regulars from the past. If they're not dead, they're in this movie. With the exception of two actors that didn't show up in this one. But the Fast and Furious movies do that, just like the MCU movies. They have an actor or two that'll sit out a film here and there just to ultimately be back for a future film or installment. Yeah, there were some rumors that The Rock wasn't in this one because of a few that him and Vin Diesel had in the past, but they've since squashed that since both of them have become fathers now and they've just matured. They've decided to move past those petty differences. So they're cool now. Even vocally saying that The Rock probably will be in the finale. But instead of The Rock as a heavyweight in this one, we get another heavyweight in John Cena playing Dom's long lost brother he's had this whole time. I will say the casting for that was actually pretty good. When you see John Cena, you believe that that could be Vin's brother. And they give you a whole backstory of why he's not talking to him anymore and all that stuff, which they do a decent job at. But in my opinion, the only reason they're including this whole brother character in the films is because they're running out of steam. I mean, so much to where they're using some of the same stunt sequences from the other films with cars and people. It's pretty evident when you're watching this one that they're running out of steam a little bit. Honestly, I'm surprised they made it this far based on the original movie in 2001 about street racing. I thought part one was a good movie. It was better than I expected to be at the time. Part two, I feel like it's just a huge MTV music video. I just don't care for it. There's nothing really fun about it to me. It's just a big commercial in my opinion. And part three, I just thought it was kind of eh, I didn't care. It wasn't even any of the same characters, but for me, Four, five, and six, where they sort of rebooted it with four, that's a solid trilogy. Like, in my opinion, full on, solid action movie. It's really stylish, it's sexy. You get introduced to Gal Gadot in those. For my money, four, five, and six are the best out of the series. I feel like if you show those to anybody and be like, these are actually good, I feel like most people will be surprised because it's not what they were expecting from the Fast and Furious movies. Because the first ones were about street racing, four, five, and six sort of turned into Mission Impossible heist movies, but now with nine wrapping up the trilogy of seven, eight, and nine now, these have become just like superhero films, like completely unbelievable and unrealistic. But like I said, they're marketing that. That's what they're going for. So if you're expecting anything else, you're bad. One of the things I think they did better in this movie was the comic relief. Tyrese and Ludacris definitely had some really funny moments in this one. And so did some other people. <laughs> that was one of the things that stood out to this movie, the comic relief in a Fast and the Furious film. But other than that, it ain't nothing new, ain't nothing different. It's a Fast and Furious movie and actually kind of a diluted one in my opinion. So I give it a C. 
It's worth seeing on the big screen or IMAX just because of the spectacle of the action. But I think it's very apparent that they're losing steam and it's time to wrap this up. They talked about the finale after this being a two-parter and like everybody coming back for it. What I'd like to see is the finale be like really dark go to more of a serious tone, take out the superhero Mission Impossible stuff and get really like deep, maybe a ransom or something like that. Like I just wanna see a movie of Vin Diesel taking revenge, looking for somebody and whooping ass, kinda like Rambo or something. I don't know, I feel like they need to switch gears for the finale in my opinion, but they probably won't. Well, that'll do it for this episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in for some more popcorn. Look for Brassford Brothers on Facebook, look for Bobby Williams on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter, Brassford Bobby at Brass Real. If you haven't done so already, Hit that subscribe button so you can help us make it to the top. And as always, if life gives you lemons, make some hot, fresh popcorn. Please tell me that's not a Pontiac Fiero strapped to a rocket engine.